Good morning. Thank you for joining me on this Friday morning. Uh, last night, the Republican National Committee announced that Jacksonville will host their 2020 convention right here in our city. This is a tremendous opportunity uh, for the citizens of Jacksonville, uh, both econ economically, uh, for businesses to get back on their feet as we emerge from COVID-19 uh, in a safe and responsible way. It's also a tremendous opportunity to showcase our city to the world and all that we have to offer from our sports and our arts, our entertainment, our beaches, our river, uh, our quality of life, uh, all of the things that we know and love about our city will be able to showcase to the world. I'm grateful to all of the people uh, that made this happen. There was a lot of work that happened uh, behind the scenes to make the case for Jacksonville. Uh, numerous cities were considered Numerous cities uh, were making their case, uh, but in the end, uh, we, we, we won this tremendous opportunity. While I know that this is a big win for our city, uh, I know that there are many that are concerned about COVID-19. Uh, how do we navigate our way into a large scale event as we come out of uh, the pandemic that is COVID-19 and the virus that frankly is still with us? Uh, and we're just gonna have to continue to act responsibly. Uh, but as we've proven weeks ago, when we hosted the first uh, f first professional sporting event uh, during COVID-19, uh, UFC, which we did in a safe and responsible way, uh, we'll also be able to do that with the Republican National Convention, uh, given we, where we are uh, with the effects of this pandemic that we're emerging from. Our percent of positive cases remain at 2.7%. Uh, while we increased the availability of COVID-19 testing, we now have over 25 testing locations in, a, in operation in our city. So as I've said many times before, you will, we can expect the raw number of positives to increase. But as I've said multiple times, the statistic to watch is the percent of positive cases. That data shows that we have in fact flattened the curve for weeks now. In addition, Hospitalizations are down significantly in Duval County. Uh, I speak with hospital leaders regularly, uh, as every week, uh, sometimes daily, and the number of patients treated in emergency departments and in our hospitals uh, continues to decline. It's a, that's a data point that we will continue to watch and adapt and react accordingly. My team and I will continue to collaborate with our local, state, and federal law enforcement health experts to ensure that this convention is smooth, safe, and secure event for everyone. So let's celebrate this together. Let's get people back to work and let's showcase our city. Uh, with that, I'll take questions. AG with Florida Politics. Hey, Mayor, good morning. Thank you. Um, you you've had protests in the street the last couple of weeks. Um, you know these, these conventions are magnets for protests. You'll see the Antifa types. You'll see the boogaloo types, you'll see everybody come into town. Um, how does an overstretched JSO handle this, given the fact that they've been basically pressed so hard for the last few months and for the last few years? I mean, how does JSO keep this under check and can guarantee safety to the people of the city? Well, the first thing is uh, this is the United States of America. So peaceful protest uh, is a right. Uh, and here in Jacksonville, uh, we honor and respect that right. As it relates to JSO and public safety, with a convention, uh, regardless of which party hosts a convention in a city, there is significant funding that comes from the federal government, which will allow us and which we will bring in uh, federal and state partners, uh, other law enforcement from other counties. I've talked to Sheriff Williams about this. They're, they're pros at this. So there will be additional resources in our city um, that will be subsidized uh, by the federal government as a part of any convention that's hosted in any city. Jim with News for Jax. You know, Mayor, there are so many questions about this. Number one is, you mentioned a little bit of how we're gonna pay for this, but there's gonna be all of these additional costs. I know they're talking the arena that this is gonna be held. What other parts of the city, the convention center, are we going to bring in a ship? You know, there was that talking in a, a cruise ship possibly as well. I'm, how are we going to do this? 
And then this really does seem like an orchestrated event. You had the march with the sheriff. You brought down the statues this week. You have this announcement today. All of this really seems to play into to bringing in this convention. Were these tied in together to do this to show what Jacksonville can do? But I think number one is how are we going to pay for this? Yeah, well, first thing is uh, there's a we'll have a host committee uh, that is a nonprofit a non-political, uh, no party affiliated organization that is the tourism and event arm of the event that will raise private dollars, tens of millions of dollars of private dollars to pay for this. This is not an event that is paid for um, by the city of Jacksonville. Uh, we have the hotel capacity to handle this. You know, I've heard talk about, uh, I've seen some media reports, you know, there's no new hotels since the Super Bowl. That's just a ridiculous statement. Uh, while the hotels in and around downtown uh, have not grown significantly, specifically downtown, the hotel capacity in and around our city exists and our metropolitan area exists. There's many more hotel rooms than there were uh, back around the Super Bowl. Uh, this is a tremendous opportunity for uh, economic development. And to answer the first part of your question, uh, Jim, my actions this week on Tuesday uh, were the right thing to do. I believed it was the right time. I said that day I evolved on the issue. Uh, at the same time, uh, I want to get people back to work in this city. Uh, and this is a major event uh, that will bring jobs uh, and economic recovery to a whole lot of people in this city. And with First Coast News. Good morning, Mayor. I wonder if you could tell us when you learned that the city had been confirmed and from whom? Uh, we were on edge uh, literally up until last night. So I had a pretty good sense that we were in, good, in a good spot uh, days ago, but uh, an organization like the RNC that doesn't want things to leak, that's obviously visiting other cities. I mean, they were visiting other cities. They, had, they were getting major pitches from other cities. Uh, but uh, I had a pretty good idea that it was us yesterday. Uh, but even up to last night, I were calling members of my team. Is this happening? Is this happening tonight? I, and uh, I saw the news. Uh, my team had the news but before we even before I even got the news from my team internally. I saw the news from you guys that report the news. Chris from the Florida Times Union. We'll come back to you, Chris. We, oh, can you we hear me got now? you. We got you. Okay. Sorry. So, good morning, Mayor. I have a couple questions for you. Uh, the first is, has the city pledged a certain amount of money um, to go towards hosting this? And if not, does the city have a general idea how much it's going to cost to host the event? Um, the second question is, you know, what events are going to be taking place in Jacksonville? I assume it's going to be the, uh, President Trump's nomination. I was wondering if there are going to be any other events. And then the third question is, um, have you considered um, ways that the city would be able to protect residents and people in this town if there was an outbreak happening in other cities across the country, but not necessarily in Jacksonville? Because, you know, Jacksonville's fared much better than other cities, but it seems if you're bringing this many people into town, you would also have to consider the status of the outbreak, you know, across the country. So I just want to see if you put yeah. any thought to that and what you think about it. Uh, the, the, the city does not pay for this event, so we've not committed dollars to this event. Uh, I have been in touch with, we will be releasing at some point a host committee that is, again, is a non-political, non-profit organization that will raise the dollars to pay for the event. Um, your other question was, uh, uh, I believe, COVID-19 uh, safety. Look, I, I took this pandemic seriously on the front end. I continue to take it seriously. Uh, I monitor the science, I monitor the hospitalizations, and will always adapt the, the actions of our city and our citizens based on the data at that time. It's important though, that given where we are, uh, as we are in a recovery mode, that we plan events, that we plan economic recovery, and uh, we act accordingly uh, uh, as uh, data, related to the virus comes in. Uh, was there another part to the question? Sorry, that was a lot of 
threw a lot at me there. Did I answer your question, Chris? Can you hear me now? Yeah. I was just wondering if there are other events besides President Trump's nomination oh, sure. acceptance that are going to happen here. Um, so I'm not going to get ahead of the RNC. Uh, they'll have additional announcements coming in the days ahead. My expectation is that uh, majority of the events, uh, hotel rooms, stays, economic activity, uh, and events around the convention – Outside of basic business, which is a small number of people, that will be done in Charlotte, is my understanding and belief. And we're going to get uh, a majority of uh, the economic development in the events. Mike with the Daily Record. Yes. Hi. Good morning, Mayor. Um, a, a lot of a lot of businesses um, in Jacksonville, including hotels, are you know still kind of operating at, at, at reduced staffing levels um, just because of the pandemic. Um, I guess what what is what have these businesses told you as far as their ability to to to, to uh, ramp back up hiring um, in in, to, in a pretty short window in order to accommodate the RNC and what will the city do to help ensure that those uh, that those businesses are 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 ready to receive an influx of people. Well, when the RNC did their homework, uh, that was one of the first orders of business to vet and understand our hotel room capacity and ability to handle those people in a safe and responsible way. And uh, members of our community uh, worked with them and they came to the conclusion, which we believe they would and is, is the right answer, that our hotels uh, can handle and are ready to handle uh, uh, the Republican National Convention. In, in late August. Melanie with News for Jax. Melanie, can you hit unmute? Okay, sorry about that, Mayor. Um, so I'm curious about, as far as the participants, will they be required to wear masks, take temperature checks, and who ultimately will decide the rules to keep locals and participants safe? There will absolutely be COVID-19 safety protocols in place. Uh, but as you know, uh, so we're look two and a half months out. Um, the status of COVID-19, the risk of COVID-19, what it will look like in late August, uh, will, will likely not look like what it does today. Look at where we are today based where we were a couple of months ago. A couple of months ago, uh, there were suggestions and statements that theme parks in our state wouldn't open until next year, that sports teams wouldn't be back until next year, that there would be no athletic events. Uh, inside of 10 to 12 weeks, that all changed. Uh, so uh, we continue on this traje trajectory, and uh, we're going to be ready to go. Uh, we're going to be back in business. But we're going to do it in a safe and responsible way. And whatever protocols are necessary at that time to protect people, they'll be in place. Uh, David with WB, WBTV in Charlotte. Welcome to Jacksonville. Appreciate it, Mary Curry. Um, just wanted to ask you about uh, some of the finances of this. You mentioned earlier that the federal government would help cover the costs. And that's a big question of what is going on here in Charlotte. Uh, the city has spent $14 million, accepted a $50 million grant. Have you been given any assurances from the president or anyone else in the federal government just about how that money might transfer or how the city will get that money in such a short time period? I don't know the logistics of how it will transfer, but I can tell you that every single interaction that I've had uh, with the federal government since I've been mayor, uh, COVID-19 funds, uh, funding for other projects that they've committed to, um, uh, disaster relief funding, uh, we've gotten the funds, the dollars come in. Uh, we can handle the timing of it. Uh, we have cash on hand. If we ever get into that situation, which we've had in hurricanes, we don't expect to get into that situation in this event, but we've always gotten reimbursed and gotten reimbursed timely uh, uh, since I've been mayor of the city as it relates to federal government commitments. Sky with WJCT. Hey, morning, Mayor. Um, there's obviously a lot of public feedback on this event. Do you believe that th throughout this process, you took into account public input when it came to pitching Jacksonville? And my second question for you is, a lot of people and some protesting organizations are concerned that the timing of this event occurs around the same time as the 60th anniversary of Axe Handle Saturday. I wanted to get 
uh, your thoughts and opinions on that as well. Uh, anytime we can pursue large scale economic events uh, for our city, uh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it in a safe and responsible way. Uh, as it relates to the terrible, tragic event that was that, that was Axe Handle Sunday, uh, that is, uh, uh, we have to acknowledge uh, that. And uh, it was a terrible time in our city. Uh, that is in no way connected to this economic event, event though, that will happen in our city. Uh, and we're going to put this event on uh, in a safe, responsible way. And as I said before, uh, this is the United States of America, the right of peaceful protest. Uh, we respect that and honor that. And uh, we have free speech. People attend conventions of both parties uh, so the nominee can make the case. Uh, people protest and disagree, and then people go vote. And their voice will be heard at the ballot box. Uh, and that's how we do that peacefully in our country. Hannah with WOKV. Hi, Mayor. So I had two questions. The construction downtown, like the Hartbridge Expressway, will that completion date move up? And then you said that this will have a $100 million economic impact. Can you tell us where you got that number? And is that impact over multiple years or just one? Uh, the Hart Bridge construction, uh, we've consulted with experts on that. I'm not in the specific details on that, but the, 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 the demolition and reconstruction of that will obviously be adapted to in and around this event, and it'll be done seamlessly. The $100, $100 million impact, uh, as with any financial model when you're hosting any event, whether it be in our city, for example, the Florida-Georgia-Georgia-Florida Florida game, uh, we had the Super Bowl years ago. Those are economic models that are based on certain assumptions with the best available data, and that's what we have at this point in time. And uh, uh, in the end, it's going to be a tremendous economic event for the people of Jacksonville. Let's think about the small businesses. Obviously, the big businesses are going to be impacted by this positively. The number of restaurants, the number of breweries, the number of small retail shops that were shut down for months that have now reopened that many tell me the reopening is happening and they're starting to get back on their feet, but they're struggling. This is a tremendous opportunity for them and their families and their customers to get money back in the economy, get people back to work. And look, when I go around to restaurants and retail shops, people are acting and behaving responsibly and they're gonna to continue to do that as we move towards this convention, which is many, many weeks away. Gary with Politico. Welcome to Jacksonville. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just had a, a, a quick question. You were talking earlier about the safety protocols. My question, though, is did you have to give the RNC any blanket assurances that, especially when the president was speaking, that there, there would be no mask or anything like that present in, in the arena on the night that he gives the acceptance speech? Look, there are no guarantees or assurances when it comes to public safety in any situation. You have to act according to the situation at that moment in time. Clearly, the RNC wants a large event with a lot of people. Uh, I want that too. By the way, I want sports back with a lot of people in arenas and stadiums. And it seems we're headed that direction. And that's how we're planning and we're acting now, given the data that we have. Uh, I believe we're going to be back in business and have a lot of people in a safe, responsible way. If COVID-19 presents challenges uh, in the weeks ahead, as we move into August, that we have to adapt to to keep people safe, we will put the safety of people first. Uh, based on the information and data that I see now, I expect that this event is going to demonstrate that uh, Jacksonville uh, is back in business. One more question, Lou with First Coast News. Hey, Mayor, thank you very much. So August 24th to 27th, um, what days are going to be kind of your most active? Is it going to be the whole week? Is going to be very active? We've heard President's acceptance speech. I kind of want to hear on that. And you mentioned businesses that had to close down. So having covered a couple of these conventions, when you go to these host towns, they're shutting down all of the downtowns. And they're shutting down massive amounts of blocks. And that'll include a lot of small businesses here downtown as well. I, I know Duval's massive. 
and then the St. Johns County and Nassau County will have impact as well. But uh, do you know anything logistically about what's going to happen with downtown shutdowns uh, yet as, as far as security? And then the second question I have for you, you mentioned uh, the UFC at the beginning of this. Well, that was fanless. I know this is weeks away. Um, do you anticipate limited capacity in the uh, arena? And then you mentioned Georgia, Florida as well. I mean, it may sound silly, but will you open RV City? I mean, will, will that be a, a potential for bringing in uh, more people to, to downtown? Mayor? Yeah, so uh, so I've been in uh, conversations with the chamber, Daniel Davis, who has the chamber, and there's a real commitment to ensuring that small businesses, local businesses, uh, feel the positive econ economic impact of this. And geographically, the way our downtown is laid out at this moment in time compared to where it's been hosted in other downtowns, I've been to uh, both the RNC and DNC convention uh, in, in previous years in other cities. The way, our, the, the way the security perimeter is laid out in many cities, if you have businesses that are compact in those areas, they're obviously going to be impacted because of security perimeter. While we haven't laid that perimeter out yet, the way our downtown is laid out, and if you look at Bay Street and the way our businesses is laid out, it looks that we will be more likely be able to create a security perimeter that allows most of our downtown businesses to operate uh, and have a positive impact uh, from this event. And then the second part of the question was Florida, Georgia. Uh, oh, RV. Uh, look, the, we have the hotel capacity. Uh, this is a new announcement. I think as this evolves in the days ahead, uh, additional options are on the table if needed. At this point in time, uh, all the information we have, we have the hotel capacity we need to host this and get people in here in a, in a safe and responsible way. Thank you all for joining me this morning. Uh, I appreciate uh, the early morning questions. Have a great day.